Hi guys, it's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. Let me inspire you once more about the business of farming this quail. I already made a comparison before that this quail farming is as lucrative as other businesses like the ducks, the chickens, the geese, and even the fish farming. I really love to farm quails because they don't demand such big uh, attention. In fact, you can just raise them in a small portion of your house, limiting the number of maybe two or 3,000 quails in a very small space. That would be possible. You will just uh, make this uh, layered cages for the quail. And like what we are doing here, we have three big cages of this quail, and we have layered this one into three layers. And this proves to us that it's really a good business. Why? Because you can sell the eggs because these quails are like egg machines. They're really very religious in laying their eggs. It is almost 100% if you are just giving them the correct diet, the correct food, and the correct timing in the giving of food, then they will actually lay eggs up to 90%. And there are some tips that I would like to share with you once more about this uh, quail farming. I always mention about the ratio between the male and the female. Well, you have to bear in mind that if you are going to put many cocks inside in this uh, cage of the male, then this will create chaos because these male are really fun of breeding and picking the feathers of these uh, female quails. So we have to reduce the number of males inside in the breeding uh, cage. That is if your business is actually selling chicks. But if you intend to sell only the eggs of this quail for human consumption, well, we don't need any more the cocks inside in the cage because they will lay eggs out of the food that they eat. Another thing that I can share with you is putting these quails in a secure area. Well, I already have shared with you 
before that I really had the problem about the predators. And the number one predators that are present here are actually the cats. They are eating a lot of our quails. And number two are the lizards. There are lizards that are actually visiting here. In fact, some of these lizards can even kill big turkeys. I already have experienced this one that our turkey had been attacked by the dogs and big lizards. They are also attacking our quails. Many suggestions had been engaged by our viewers and we discussed about, you know, why not putting this uh, cages of the quail in an area where no predators could come in and that's very uh, good suggestion but in our case here we don't anymore have the cats because we solved the problem by putting some dogs and these dogs are driving away the cats but i have one visitor here and you will see that this visitor is really very brave this is none other than a snake because before we film this video we actually saw a visitor a predator actually coming over and attempting to eat our quails he is so hungry i don't know if he's a she or a he but this is a little snake this is not just a small snake but this can already consume one uh, quail and he's actually preying on them i don't know what's in his mind actually right now but i saw him attempting to eat some of the quails maybe the quails are just too big for him i believe that if given the chance to be able to stay here for a longer period of time then i can sense that this snake can even swallow a quail or two so this is actually the things that are happening and this is beyond our control because of course this is an open area and that's why I said that if we can put this in a secluded area covered with screen, uh, it's better so that these predators could not disturb. This is not my first time to handle snakes. I can even handle cobras. But... Uh, we will show you how we're gonna catch this one. Of course, this is a wild snake. In catching a snake, we have to contain him on his head because if you will touch the body, then maybe that's a very risky uh, effort that sometimes they will be able to bite us. So what we're gonna do here is to control him on his neck. See that? Wow. You see? Wow. Oh, very strong. <laughs> very strong snake. And it's up to you to suggest what may be the best thing to do with the snake. We will release this in the wild or we will, you know, have this as our pet. There are really snakes in our place because this is a swampy area and this used to be the rice field filled with, you know, water. The water here is very deep and that's why this is a favorite place of the snakes you know these are pythons here reticulated pythons and they are really powerful when they are going to constrict us and i can feel the the strength of this very healthy snake and uh, you can make suggestions what we're gonna do with him of course i am tempted to make him or to keep him as a pet and i can sense that he's a male because of the form of this uh, anus here as we speak today we are also very proud to say that at the incubator we are able to harvest a thousand every five days this is a a breakthrough a milestone because before we only started with 29 heads and i think some of you could still recall that when we started this quail farm we only started with a couple of pairs 
and uh, we were patiently waiting for the eggs and then we incubated this one until it reaches now 3,000 heads. And I would like to tell you that we are selling the chicks. Those of you who are also interested about this uh, business, you can come to our store and you can place your order because uh, as of the moment, there are really plenty of orders that are being scheduled and I'm releasing that on the first come, first serve basis. And so far, we already have disposed more than 4,000 quails to the market. And since then, we already have uh, recovered our expenses for the construction of this uh, layer cages for the labor and other incidental expenses and also the consumption for the feeds because this is actually very saleable because no one in this place have been able to you know do this uh, hatching of the eggs since we already have this big incubator we utilize this one for the the hatchery compared to selling of the eggs and selling of these chicks well i must say that it's more lucrative when you are going to sell the chicks. Hi guys, we are now here in our GPS bamboo tank and we paint this with this used oil came from motorcycle. We buy this around at 100 pesos and come on, let's paint the bamboo. You look at this guys, these are actually efforts that resulted to fabrication of this beautiful tank. I must say that this is beautiful, one, because we did not spend a lot of money of this or for this, for the construction. Number two, this is very durable. Why? Because this is made of bamboo and maybe you have doubts about the bamboo. Well, we can make bamboos durable if we're gonna paint this with used oil. And you have seen what we have done here. Actually, our staff have been so busy in painting this one with the used oil. And uh, in here, we are just near to the shop of these uh, motorcycles. And the, this used oil are just readily available. So you can make this very strong and durable if we will utilize with you know this uh, used oil and you will also see that Noel here is actually busy in doing some uh, pipings here because uh, this is not just an ordinary tank we will make this a tank with a bottom drain for our filtration uh, bucket and this is gonna be now the source of the outlet over here we will also have one outlet over there and so on so actually we are aiming to have six drain pipes that will give us the cycle and free flow of the water down under going to the bucket and then going back to the main tank so these are actually the principles that we have to observe in order for us to be really become successful in our dream to have this uh, kind of farm
This principle had been doing well for the past 20 years. And before I did not, you know, share this with you, but since we already have so many followers bringing testimony that they really had this uh, great lesson out of our tutorials, then I might as well teach you about the bottom drain system. So we expect to release some, you know, either Japanese koi, the catfish, or maybe this goldfish. Since we have the mud pan, of course, we will prioritize this mud pan as our grow out tank. But this could be, perhaps in the future, a holding area where we can store the fish before we're gonna release them to the market. So these are the things that we can share with you so far. I hope you will continue to like and share our videos. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, may we humbly ask you to please subscribe and hit that notification bell because we are uploading videos every two days now. And shout out to the members of this channel. Thanks a lot for the new subscribers. Welcome to the family. And even to those who made comments, thank you. And I would like to see you in my next video. Only here at Dexter's World.